Okay, now I was deciding just to go ahead and skip the arms, but I'm going to show everything I do from start to finish in case there's anything I might mention or forgot to mention or there's something that you wanted to see. I'm going to go ahead and show the whole process. So some of this might be redundant. Um, if it is, feel free to skip through the videos. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and I need to start moving the arms into place. <clears throat> One thing I did forget to mention that, uh, let's turn that symmetry, let's turn mirror mode back on. So uh, we're only doing one side, half the work. And I know I want to go into the top view. I know that's way too far, like near the back. So I want to move that forward. Let me grab this. I probably will grab the wrong side. Yep, there we go. So, okay. As far as I know, like, I know the art kit's very helpful. It definitely streamlines a lot of work, for sure. Um, I know it's primarily very... I've used it for mainly bipedal, char bipedal characters the most. Uh, if anyone else is out there has maybe been using it for more than just bipedal characters or something crazy that I haven't been able to use, I mean, that'd be awesome if maybe they posted it. Um, but I have to find it and see what's going on and find a way to work with it. So, all right, I want to go ahead and I want to rotate these arms into place. So I'm doing just a standard Y rotation here. And yep, it's looking about the center of where it needs to go. The other thing I forgot to mention too was uh, besides just being in offset mode and being able to say, let's take this socket and just move the socket, you can even rotate your socket so that other things are offset. So when you go back to global, this axis in which the bone is lying is different than the rest of the arm or different than other pieces within the chain. It also affects the other side if, since we had mirror mode on. But I know for the shoulder, I don't want that. Now this would be good for what I had done early on one one character I had done earlier, which was uh, Alicia for another pro. She's a character for another project I'm working on, where I needed her skirt or like her dress or whatever to flare outwards. And when I originally built the bones, I had all the bones lined world direction, and it didn't work. And it took me a while to find out why, but then I just needed to go back to the basics. And that was, I just had to look at the, the joint orientation. The orientation was just, it was set to global. So once I offset those orientations to become local, the local direction they needed to be, then it started working. So I'm going to rotate this arm up a little bit. Align this hand in. Normally be breaking your arm by then, but <coughs> let's see. Okay. Get this hand going because this is usually the more the more tedious part of the whole process. Cool thing is, is instead of having to go in and you can't select those, you can come into the hand, pick that yellow cue, that little yellow box. Now you can start moving all the joints around for the hands. I'm gonna turn on local mo local translation again because it's a bit easier to work with the hands on this. It's a lot easier to work with the fingers when it's on a local. So back into tool settings, just going to select local and get it off world translation for now. So I want to go ahead, I want to move that place about the center. I'm guesstimating here. Alright, so let's start using the, let's do this the old school my way before 2015. And I need to change that rotation from world to local as well. So now it's on world, go to local. And I want to go ahead and rotate that into place. Okay, so I'm going to go down the chain. I want to pick that secondary joint, the thumb. And I don't think anything's going to show if you do x-ray joints. Nope, that's a negatron. Nothing did show. So we're going to have to stay with transparency mode on for now. So I'm going to go ahead and move those. I can see that those uh, couple of lines here with the thumb, that's the, de that's the extra topology for the deforming of the fingers. So we need the edge of the thumb, and I know I needed that to be around the, the edge loop, those three edge loops around that thumb, but I can tell, right, this is off just a bit, so I want to rotate this a little bit upwards and then move that thumb down, that final joint. A lot of times the way I like to do to model out a lot of my fingers, a lot of appendages that need flexibility, such as fingers or knees, 
is I'll do one edge loop underneath where the, the fold or crease would be for the low poly and then within halfway up I'll break it up into three split it across so then it has the actual uh, it has the actual stretching now it has enough topology to allow it to deform without stretching the textures to a, a extreme degree uh, I mean this could have done better this could have maybe gone up one more but I wanted to make sure that I had enough you know flexibility between all the joint all the uh all the uh to pol all the polygons so back in transparency mode let's go ahead and get the index finger into place actually I'm going to select all these fingers and I know I need to move them over a little bit so I'm going to select the edges of these oh can't do a mass selection so I'm going to go ahead and move fingers over I'm going to move them in I'm going to do a really really just dirty move of everything where I think they need to go. Alright, about the edge of the knuckle. And uh, that's not too bad. So let's keep on rotating these into position. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. So to me, it's I feel like I'm wasting air time here, but. Okay, there's that one. Let's move down the joint chain here. Line it up with those three edge loops, at least within the middle. There is a function within Maya that's built, and it's this one up here where they have the make live and everything right underneath where you'd find like mesh tools if you were on polygons. And it, it has this magnet with a little point in the middle. It's a snap to project the center. And I'm not 100% sure if this works. I could try. But I don't think it will. No. It's going to stay with where the joints are. Um, maybe if you get it to work, that's awesome. That but it'll usually when you're building joints it'll try to snap to the center of all these polygonal areas so I need to move this up a bit more okay let's move the edge of that finger down okay middle finger let's go ahead and rotate that into position let's move it down some more It's looking pretty good so far from what I can see it being in the center of that finger. Move that down. Need to move it over to the side, so I want to rotate the uh, bone to the middle. There we go. Alright, it's looking pretty good. Last two more at the ring. Rotate that into position. I'm going to move that down a bit since we're still on the local axis here. Rotate over to the left. Of, I'm sorry, to the right. You know, lefts and rights, I get mixed up here and there. Okay, let's go down to the middle of that knuckle. Okay, down to the very end. Alright, let's move that root up a little bit more, rotate it up so they're about the center. Okay, and the last one, let's move it down just a bit more. Alright, it's in the center. Okay, last last digit. And this one's gonna fall into place too because when I modeled this character in its low res form, I made the pinky a bit small. So that's a critique I would need to uh, make note of in the future when I do other characters. So let's go ahead and rotate that down. Normally I'd be doing this with my heavy metal music on or anything for that matter. Mainly to block out my neighbors, but alright, move that pinky up just a little bit. There we go. All right, so this is where we needed to be so far. So looking over our skeleton one more time, make sure that all of our positions are where they want them to be. Foot's good, our leg's good, our pelvis is good. Spine's in position, the arm's in position, the hands are in position. Okay, so now we have all our bones in a position where they need to, we need them to go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go turn that transparency off and go ahead and turn off symmetry 
going to go back and it looks like it's in offset mode but it still is in global just uh, don't worry too much about the color I mean you can always flip it back and forth and it'll fix it sometimes it's just that happens so we are good there and I'm definitely not clicking that button that resets everything and our bones are in a position so now let's go ahead and we want to save out this template and I'm going to call this one the Titan Skeleton Template S-K-E-L save it out as another text file so that way if anything ever happens or we gotta go back and we want to add more joints or bones and it's reset back to the original mannequin position pose uh, we just have to load up that template and it'll be just fine. So if I can make an example of that, I'll show you really quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's go back to skeleton creation. And actually, you know, I don't know if it's going to work really. Let's create a rig pose. I think right now, even though we went back one screen, it's still thinking that we're in deformation setup. So I, all I was doing was saving out the rig poses and everything because I'm basically saying I want this to be the position and this is going to be set up in his T pose. I don't want the proxy mesh. If you ever see this come up, just say no. It's if you're not going to use the proxy mesh. And right now, it kicked us over to deformation setup. Uh, if I had not been in the bone skeleton template screen and back in the joint placement one, it would have been it would have been in that where I hit you know deformation setup and it would have skipped to that but you can always go back to skeleton placement and again it has the proxy mesh back let's bring up that uh, animation rigging toolkit again and we just need to go ahead and hide that proxy mesh now it looks kinda crazy up here because all that happened was a proxy had some eyeballs that got left behind when we built the deformation setup. But in this screen, that's where we would have built our rig. So let's just update it. Save out that rig pose. No for the proxy. Because we don't need that. And right now, let's get rid of those crazy eyes. It's just extra geometry that's not needed. So... You can get rid of those. It appeared below all my topology and it highlighted so I can go delete that. And actually, I think it made a few copies. Alright. Now I don't see the eyeballs. So this is why I recorded it to show if I ever have issues that come up. Now I do have an idea where these went. This happened once before. So if I zoom out, actually, if I just push F, not nothing selected, push F. You're gonna see our eyes flew way up there. So gotta do. I'm gonna bring this down out of the way. And our our meshes don't have any skinning information. So we, all they are is just points in floating space. So let's bring back the visibility of everything turn everything off of reference and let's go to not this one we want our outliner select our geometry pieces between translate and rotates just go ahead and click drag down till they're all highlighted and zero and hit zero to zero amount now if we go ahead and let's hide some of that armor again our eyes should hopefully be back into position. There they are. These eyes just got translated up way up at the top up there because, again, it's just a funky little thing that happens every once in a while. It's, it's what you get with working with the art tool. Um, but hopefully I can, if that happens to you, just select all your mesh pieces, zero out the translates and rotates, and everything should be back into position the way it was before. So at this point, we have our character completely we have all of our templates pretty much ready to go. Now we got to start doing the long tedious process of getting this character skin weighted to all the bones. It's going to be, I think, about a couple of videos for that, but let's get underway.